welcome to the 2014 Chicago Custom and Vintage Drum. So Jim Messina is my name for Vintage Drums Talk. We've got a very special panel here today, and we're glad to show you some terrific drum and some very respected collectors. We've got Mr. Mike Corrado. Don't forget Mr. Mark Cooper, and of course, Ben Goldberg, who is the owner of these three very interesting drums, and we're going to have a fascinating discussion about those drums. I'm glad you're all here today to enjoy this show. Let's get on with the show. Why don't you hit us with what these drums are, Ben? Tell us all about them. Well, they're round. They go boom. I like them. Um, I Let me just preface this, Jim, with saying that... Um, I've known a lot of these gentlemen for a long time, and I know of some of these gentlemen. Mark and I just met today for the first time. Reputations precede them. Uh, but this is my first time ever to the Chicago show, and I'm very glad to be here. Very, uh, We're glad you're here. Having a great time. Uh, the last time I saw Mike was at the San Francisco show during the, the Liam days. Um, but to get started, I guess right in front of me here, this drum is the one that's getting probably most of the attention. Um, everybody likes a good Radio King. Um, and Mark has a theory on it. I have a hopeful theory on it. Um, but near as we can tell, I call it the identity crisis drum. Uh -huh. uh, or we could call it the Gemini drum. The reason for that is, if the camera's looking at it, first of all, the first thing we probably notice is that it's a very rare finish, which is commonly known as rosemarine pearl, which was offered in the 29 catalog, am I correct? It's actually called rose pearl. They rose pearl. Yeah. 1929, yeah. 19, Thank you for that. And 30. Okay. Um, the badge puts it at 1949, circa 1949. So we have a rare finish, we have a Radio King, but the odd thing, the identity crisis comes into play when I flip it around here. It actually has a cloud badge from the 30s. I see. Right here we have the cloud badge. That, he's saying, depicts the 30s, right? Okay. Actually, 40s. Sorry. I'm sorry. That's why you're here. That's why Mark is here. 40s. Actually, it would be 40s, That's correct. It's a 40s cloud badge, and on the other side, we've got... It's, yeah, it's got the recessed letters. As it right. to raise letters. That's why I came here. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this was uh, the first of the oval badges, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Circa, okay. circa 49. Um, we, uh, the three of us, collectively, <coughs> took the top calf head off about an hour ago and took a peek at it. Um, so I came to this show with one possible theory. I'll let Mark share his theory. Um, you don't know with vintage drums. Anything could happen. Uh, the theory that I was thinking or maybe hoping, number one, because I wasn't sure about the finish, is that quite possibly this was wrapped and badged in the 40s with some leftover pearl from the 30s, potentially. Okay. Why the seam would be this close to the badge, I don't know. Maybe it was shelved because it was a Friday or Monday. See if we can get a shot of this here, this, this seed. That's what you're talking about right, right That there. doesn't okay. make sense. There's a lot of things on this drum that doesn't make sense. So, and then maybe later in 49 also, that was, um, it's about period correct with the rivets. Because um, shortly after that, right. they went to the, yes. the capped rivets. Um, so, it was probably maybe rebadged and sent out, maybe it was a salesman sample. Don't know, B-stock display, trade show. That's what I was thinking. Until we pulled the head off, Mark looked at it, and we have an additional theory. My theory is <laughs> My theory is that uh, this was an old rewrap for several reasons. One, this pattern of the Rose Pearl is totally different from what was available on Rose Pearl in 1929, 1930. It's a much smaller, tighter pattern, and it's, it's this is an uncatalogued finish. Now, my theory is this is a, an old rewrap done in the done around 1949. The hardware is all correct for late 40s. Everything is correct except for the finish and the two badges. On the inside, we notice the grommet application is different on, on one badge as it is from the other. So they obviously were not done at the same time. And why would you have a cloud badge and an oval badge at the same time? So that's my theory is it was rewrapped 
in the in the late 40s, early 50s. I have seen a blue version of this, which you happen to have. I do have one, you, not with me, but with the same small pattern. Uh huh. Very extremely thin wrap, as opposed to the standard wrap that Slayerwood would use. And I'm thinking that they use a really thin wrap so that it would go over a, a possibly a Duco painted finish. Because it, most people know if you try to wrap, rewrap over top of a painted finish, the heads will never go on. I have experienced so, that myself. I learned that the hard way. Right. We all did. Especially calf heads. Um, this does have Radio King calf so the, Yes. So the really super thin plastic that they used would be one one explanation would be that's why it's so thin uh, and I've seen rewraps from the early 50s there was a guy named Vespi and from Camden New Jersey he was very famous for what cocktail drums yes, and that yeah. kind of thing yeah. and what he would do he would take drums and take on uh, like a dew coat painted finish and rewrap with real similar pearl extremely paper thin pearl so to me, that suggests an, an old-time rewrap job on this, but you can't prove any of these theories. It's Again, a total mystery. A very interesting theory, and, it, and a really good, educated. <laughs> What's well, uh, it's uneducated? <laughs> <laughs> but there's no way to—I mean, there's no way to prove it. You can't go back in a time machine and find out what happened. So it's speculation. As you say, an anomaly. <laughs> this an is anomaly. what you've been describing this as, Mike. Indeed. Do you have a different? Outlook on this? On advice of counsel, I would no. <laughs> uh, just added on the on the strainer. There's a couple of things that maybe the gut piece. Well, this I, I said everything was correct. This one piece is a later, probably early 60s. The lower part of the oh the, the lower, diamond with the diamond cut out. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, they, uh, should they stamp the piece. things then that late or not? I'm sorry. Did they stamp the extension lever oh, that late? Off and think, on. I, mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. That's more. That's yeah, the only that's act, more thing they added. Is, well, they would have gotten rid of gut pieces, correct? Wouldn't have been the, the metal tab without the diamond. Though. Yeah, you would have had the metal tab without the diamond. A string was optional too, with the okay. the little holes. So. Okay. But that that's probably the only piece of hardware that isn't original <coughs> to the drum, from what I can tell. So the other variable that I had coming here, and we still don't have an answer to this, was was it coral pearl? We've determined that it's probably not. Um, but we've seen, at the very least, uh, variants in marine pearl, or rose marine. Um, rose pearl. Rose pearl. <laughs> Potato. There we go. <laughs> Tomato. <laughs> um, but, yeah, coral pearl, coral pearl, excuse me, I think you have a swatch on your website, too, Mark. Yeah. Uh, a, a scan of it. So that I haven't seen, and that's a, a little bit lighter, a little bit pinker, but to my knowledge, my limited knowledge, uh, nobody's seen one. So. The quest continues for coral right. at this point. And again, at that, in those days, you wouldn't see such a tight pattern on the pearl. Everything was the big, swirly, round, I mean, rounded. But I do have a blue one. It's yeah. It, and if my theory is correct, your blue one is a, a similar scenario. A rewrap? I guess we'll have to bring it next year and find out. And find out. That's right. Yeah. At any event, this is definitely a, a very unique vintage piece. Uh, and I'm the sure fact, the fact that it was done a long time ago really adds a lot to this. That it's not this wasn't done ten years ago or no. something. It's, so I mean, it really adds legitimacy to it to me. Good word, legitimacy. When you think of maybe the intent, when you start to think of the intent, and be like, okay, what was somebody trying to do? Right. If they were trying to do anything at well, all, maybe not. But again, as you say, if this were done a long time ago, that still makes this a very vintage right. and remarkable exactly. piece. I think. Somebody suggesting adding an extra vent hole for playability, for sound, what have you, but that makes no sense because why would they go back in time? And, uh, and why put a badge on it too? Right. A, an earlier badge. That, but uh, I still don't know. There is the identity crisis. Well, there you have it. Uh, an interesting drum, for sure. Uh, now you just called me not too long ago about these pieces and mm -hmm. these were un unknown pieces. We're going to show you more of what we've got. Uh, we're going to put this drum aside now and we're going to take a look at what Mark is holding right here. Also another Ben Goldberg piece. Sure. Now this thank, is a beautiful drum. I'm really digging that. <laughs> look at that. Well, uh, and thanks to Mike, he clarified the one question I had on this drum, which was why would Ludwig 
go to the pains of making a deluxe drum, aka Black Beauty, the flagship drum, and not engrave the company name on it. So this is a four pedal pattern, uh, which is right before the silver anniversary drums. 1929 only, I think. Was four pedal? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I said per John Aldridge, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, again, learning something new every day. Yeah. I thought it yeah. might have gone over into the early 30s. But the other, uh, to my knowledge, catalog options were, of course, deluxe hardware. Gold-plated, uh, art gold. Lady calls it knobby gold. I'm sure you'll correct me. Yeah, well. Go ahead. <laughs> art gold was Slingerland's term. Okay. And this was deluxe. Deluxe. What they were, yeah, and Lady was, like Deep. you said, knobby, knobby gold. gold. Okay. But at any rate, it's not a colored hardware. And the other thing is chrome was an option, but not too many people ordered chrome because if they were going to spend the dollars... $15, $15 upcharge. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're going to buy the Cadillac, you're going to get the leather seats. Well, that didn't happen with this drum, and it's nickel. Um, somebody suggested somebody could have swapped out the parts years ago. That's possible. I don't think so, looking at this drum. I've had this drum in my collection for some time. Um, it sounds great. But nowhere on it is it engraved Ludwig. Um, what fascinated me also was, and Mike, you might know this, um, the pattern, I believe, is the same pattern as the DFS drum yeah. that Harry Kangany has in his collection. Does he still or did he sell it? No, he still has I think, it. I think he still has okay, it. Okay, well, did anybody ever find out what DFS stands for? I can. It was a, work, it was a worker, somebody's initial worker on the line at, at the Ludwig Company. Okay, so that was another conspiracy theory. Again, I'm not uh, insinuating anything, but could have been around the same time period. Uh, my understanding is that employee was let go by Mr. Ludwig, or he let him take the drum. I he think reprimanded. Too. Yeah, uh, reprimanded. Uh -huh. Good word for that. Stopping the line. <laughs> yeah, stop on the line. Advice of counsel. So um, don't know. The, um, it, it is definitely it's a one-piece shell, and it is a super. Um, but I've never seen one. But Mike told me that he's got two. I, got a I was just going to ask, you know, yeah, as many black beauties same. as you have, Mike, as many black beauties as you have, you, have you, you've never run across this. Uh, yeah, I have uh, one or two. I have a six lugger, with uh -huh. the old scroll that's scrolled all the way around with no lid. Yeah, and then I have one. Um, I think a. a I think it's a flower pattern that all the way around. Then I have one that has the Ludwig in the lower panel. Ah. I got from John Aldridge. It was, you know, Monday morning at the office, maybe. Here's a so. possible scenario is someone wanted the engraving pattern but couldn't afford the extra cost of the gold of the imitation gold plating on everything and opted for to, to save what uh, you know, ten or fifteen dollars, whatever it would have been extra. To be able to have a drum with the fancy engraving, but none of the cut costs on the on the uh, plating, just a possibility. Why the Ludwig isn't on there could have been a mistake. Okay. Just do a slow somebody fell asleep. I've never seen that. That's no. <laughs> well, how many black beauties do you have? You don't have to answer that, but a lot. <laughs> so over a very, very small percentage, <laughs> I guess, are are unengraved. Okay. So um, something too. Just I'm looking at the drum head here, Jim. Just, yeah. Um, since I'm getting reacquainted with the vintage drum community, uh, there's always been the play or display debate with collectors and players. Yes. I do both, and I respect both. Uh, but what I'm noticing here is I wrote down some names on this drum head because the last gig I played with it, I always write down the names of the staff where we're playing uh -huh. so I can announce it on the microphone. Please, to, please make sure to tip so-and-so, take care of so-and-so. Uh -huh. so, um, for the record, I've gigged with this drum several times. So, and when it's not, it stays in the collection. So I do both. What kind of music did you play on this? Um, well, the band I'm in now, we call it Camaro Rock. <laughs> so if you can imagine 60s, 70s hard rock oh, with yeah. a twist <laughs> of the Harlem Globetrotters, that's what we're doing at the casinos. <laughs> so, another anomaly. So okay. again, coming to Chicago, all I could carry on the plane. I've got some very interesting drums, uh, drums that I'm proud of, but these, I wanted to bring something that people would go, just, what the heck is that? Or that doesn't make sense. It, enough for guys of this caliber to tilt their head a little bit so and take the head off. It's perfect for this panel, perfect to bring to a show like this again, because we have these yeah. experts, these guys know. And what I don't know. I want to get it off. And, and I really, and so. 
as we get these out there, I'm sure the, the people in the forum are going to chime in. This is perfect powder for them because they, they, they love this kind of stuff. Let's move on. What do we have here? Door number three. Well, um, a version of the most recorded snare drum in history, the 400. This is a chrome over brass, and I've seen a few at this show. Everybody should have one in their arsenal. If right. you're a carpenter, you have to have a, a crescent wrench or a hammer. Um, the brass versions are coveted, and several of us have different variations. But what I noticed about this drum, and this is a very, fairly recent acquisition for me, and I'm located in the Northwest, and this came out of a rare, very rural part of the Northwest, oddly enough. But it has an endorsee badge on the front. And so that's part of my quest, too, is if you can look close at the badge, it says, made for Dell Richardson. I've never heard of Dell Richardson. Neither has Google, apparently. Ha, huh, so you've done um, a search on him already. Yeah, uh, limited. Um, but this badge is, it's equivalent to me. It reminds me of the Dick Shorey badges of the 60s when um, that drum was given to him um, around the same time yeah, after they gave Ringo. Four of those five literally gold-plated drums. Right. Yeah. So it, it has the same looking font to me. It has the same size and screws. So I don't know it's who this person show. is. Yeah. So whoever it was, they were worthy of a top-line drum at the time. Uh, I put 62 on it. it. It could be a 63. It could be a 61. I don't know. It's a uh, red felt muffler. No serial number. Heavy brass rims. It's a very heavy ball bat 400, mm -hmm. actually. And uh, it does have the original batter. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Now, actually, out of the four of us, I would say you are the closest in knowledge to this era of drum. Oh, well. Mike collects 20s, 30s, 40s. Say so do I. Same with Mark. And... Uh, this is uh, this is, uh, seems to be right up your alley. Well, huh? I collect what I can. Yes, <laughs> opportunities given. What's the name uh, on the on the badge? Right here, Dell D E L Dell. Richards. Richardson. Look at I noticed and, something yeah. on the badge. It says W F L. Wait, yeah, W F L Ludwig, but W F Ludwig. Right. Yeah. So W F Ludwig Drum Company. Yeah. I, something so tells is, me when this airs, Dell's going to be giving you a call. He, he, <coughs> found out he might be. I'd, I'd, love, drum. I'd love to chat with him. I know where it came from. <laughs> um, so yeah, this this is uh, another prize and an anomaly. So um, let's take a shot at something like this. Now that we've talked about these three interesting drums, certainly. Just in general, we've got three experts here. I do, I don't usually delve into pricing. But it, sometimes after, you know, so many years go by, you, you have to catch up, at least get a ballpark figure on where things like this stand in today's market. Mark, can you, can you put a number on this in ballpark, not written in stone, but in your professional opinion, something like what he's talking about here. No Ludwig logo on there. What do you think? Four to five thousand. All righty then. Once again, that was just pulled out of thin air. Right. <laughs> no real. <laughs> okay. Ben, have you? Sold. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you, have you put yeah. prices on these? Have you been selling, trying to sell these? Uh, no, I'm not, actually. Okay. Um, but I guess technically everything's for sale. Yeah. Uh, as I told Mike. Um, hey, that's I, my motto. We're, yeah. we're still on our honeymoon, myself and this drum here. I see. We're still getting acquainted, too. Uh-huh. Um, with this drum here, I... It's, some would say at this show it's worth less. Some would say it's worth more because it's odd. I, th I think he's right in there. Um, chrome over brass 400s. Um, I've seen him go as high as the teens. Mm -hmm. But I would say it's got to be close to a thousand dollar drum. This one is to be determined. I honestly don't know. Um, and that's a totally legitimate I, answer too. A friend of mine has a booth here. And he told me people were coming by today asking, looking, wanting, and I said, tell them it's many, many thousands of dollars, and just so they'd leave them alone. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know if I can answer that, but I think we're close on the on these two. I think you, I think that in, uh, that special plaque on the side is going to lose to. I would yeah. hope yeah. it does to me, but well, I think my last thousand. name is not Richardson either. So, <laughs> but True. yeah, but thank you. I. It's funny, you know, a lot of times people think their stuff is worth the stratosphere and the buyer thinks it isn't. And 
So, but again, where are you going to find another one? That's right. So maybe He's Chicago. A collection, by the way. Well, we're going to delve into that at another time uh, because we're here two days at the show. Normally, Vintage Drum Stock is here one day, but today, this year we're here for today and tomorrow. We're going to be back again, of course, revisiting with Mike Carrado, Mark Cooper, Ben Goldberg. Separately, we've got plenty of other vintage drum collectors inside that are going to do interviews out here. So stay tuned, Vintage Drum Stock. Thank you, gentlemen. Mike Carrado, Ben Goldberg, Thank you, Jim. and Mark Whitey Cooper. We'll see you all in just a little bit. Stay tuned.